Hi students, it's Mrs. Watson. Today I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft OneNote using your Teams app, specifically for your Science for Process if you're one of my students. So to get started, I'm going to go to my Teams page. And when you go into Teams, you should be familiar with this just a little bit. It's where you go to see your classes. Um, you'll have all the different tiles, and you're going to pick the class that you are going to be working in. And for this one, I'm going to be working in Science Fair Test Crane. And it's going to open up just like this. Now, Mrs. Crane was awesome enough to work on this with me and make me as a student so I can show you exactly what it looks like as a student view. I'm going to do another video about how to navigate Teams itself, but let's look at class notebook. And that's where we're going to be working in. So your class notebook is exactly what it sounds like. It's a notebook that you can use for classwork. Now, Think about a binder, right? If you have a binder or a composition notebook, your teacher gives you papers to complete and you have to file them away. This is the same thing, but it's all electronic. And with this OneNote app feature, you can type in your answers, you can draw and label pictures, um, and there's a lot of really cool features I'm going to show you today. So if you look on the page, when you go into your um, class notebook, you're going to have some different tabs. Your teacher may or may not have collaboration space open, and that's going to be discussed how to use that in the future. Today we're going to focus on the two sections, the one section called Content Library, and the other section that has your name. So the Content Library is a part of your notebook that your teacher would give you like handouts. The handouts are for reading your syllabus, things that they don't want you to necessarily complete and write on, but they want you to have for information. So for our science for process in your content library, you're going to have um, and this page is where this tutorial will be, but you are going to have for each part that's due directions and you'll also have over there you could scroll through um, videos you can watch I explain how to do that. Now as I said before your content library is for you just to look at to read to get information from not to do work in but there's a really cool feature called your immersive reader sorry, your immersive reader, and you can go in there and click that. And it's going to give you quite a few options. So I'm going to actually go and make that just normal text. So you can have the immersive Students, reader. Please carefully read through. Read the text for you. You can change the speed of the text and make it male or female. Page two of your science fair packet. <laughs> so you could control all of those settings. You can change the font to different sizes and fonts itself. Um, so Comic Sans, you can do that. You can increase or the decrease the spacing accordingly. So those are all features right here for the A where it says text preferences. If you go to grammar options, you might want to break the words into the syllables to help you know how to say them. You can mark them as nouns or verbs. And if you click this, it will show you which ones are nouns and verbs. Those are all just added features that are included in OneNote. The last thing is reading preferences. You can change it to have the picture dictionary on or off and if it's a picture is on, what you do is you click on any of the words and it's going to show you what that looks like so you can see understand it better. Or you can translate it into a language of your choice right there. So that's all within and every page will have this. This immersive reader that will help you read directions and read things within your content library. So these are your tutorials. Remember things you're not writing in, but things that are just given to you by your teacher to help you. Now, if you go into where it says your name, you're going to have in this tutorial, the science fair packet, but you might have a binder for your science fair packet. You might have a, in each section right here, you can see the section right here. It's, think of it like a new folder. So you might have one for science fair. You might have one for your interactive notebooks. You might have one for, you know, whatever the, your teacher's having you set up, unit one, unit two. And with in the section or your like think about it as an area of your binder that you would normally have your teacher will give you handouts and they'll give you pages and some of them will just be things to read some of them might be things to complete and work in maybe draw and label um, type in some responses so that's going to change based on what your teacher assigns so you're just going to click under your name when we're going to science fair packet and if you click on the different ones you'll see the pages of your science fair packet so our science fair packet has our first page is our due dates if I click this arrow it will go to the next page if I click on it it makes it bigger so you can 
can see the grading rubric for the final report. And our first four pages of our science fair packet are going to be just for helpful information, how to pick your project categories. But the fourth page, and if I click on this, it should open up. It's still thinking a little bit. But I'm going to move down to this page. Okay, so this page looks a little different than the other ones. This one actually has spaces for you to write in. Now, you would get this in a classroom, a physical classroom, where you sit there and write it in, but you can't do that with a digital classroom, so this is the solution. With OneNote, you can go, if it's on the Home tab, if you click on any part of your page, you can see that, I clicked here, and I could drag it and move it around, but you can type in text. So for project idea number one, my project is on our let's say my project idea is how which liquids and I'm just typing in this in oh I can't spell liquid sorry guys <laughs> which liquid grows plants the best right and I just type that in and maybe I don't like where it looks like there and I could just move it up here so it fits better maybe I want to make it bold so I just go up there and bold it so up on the top you're gonna have all your normal Microsoft Office features, size, the font, all the features, you can highlight it, you can not, your text color, all those things are there for you. But there's some cool features in Home that you may not be unfamiliar with, because I wasn't. So if you click, go here where it says tag, you can in your text box add things like stars, so you know, study, maybe you could leave notes for yourself, or a checklist of things that you need to get done. So complete all three ideas right and this is if your teacher's talking to you you can just make a notes on the side of things you need to do and you could check off the box and there's so many other different things you can do for your tag so it's a very cool feature another feature I think you are going to love is this so if I click on a text box I can type in my response but I can also go here to the microphone where it says dictate and if I click it it's going to start listening to me talking and recording that and translating it into text. If I click on the microphone again, I can just move that text so it could have been my project idea I just verbally said and now I can move that whole box into the space I want it to be, right? And that's a really cool feature that you can use at any point in time. Now we're going to go up to the next part. Oh, also, sorry, you can always go undo if you don't like where you moved something or inserted something. You just click on home undo button. Now insert, you can insert all sorts of things. So maybe your teacher wants to insert a picture of a cell that you downloaded from the internet. Maybe a picture of your assignment that you took a picture of from your camera on your computer. Maybe a document, you can insert it there. You might want to hyperlink so you could attach a text. Um, like so I could go right here, link all that word to maybe a website or something. So that's an option there. This is a pretty cool feature um, and only use this if your teacher asks you to submit assignments or you can use it for yourself. So don't do this just to complete your work. But if you do audio, you can see the, air, the circles moving and it's actually listening to me talk. If I hit stop, it's going to stop recording. It's still thinking because it's processing the audio. It just heard me say. And eventually when it's done, if I click on it, I can listen. If you do audio, you can see the, air, the circles moving. And so I'm going to pause. So that just recorded my voice. So I could leave a note for myself remind myself to do that instead of typing it out. Um, your teacher may want you to record assignments that way, but don't do that unless they ask you to. But that's a really cool feature. And that was in insert right there. You can insert symbols, you can insert math parts, um, you can insert emojis, okay? And you could do it right here, you can insert something called stickers, and those are just cute little pictures, which are stickers, right? Now let's go to the next feature, which is draw. Now, if you are typing things in, you're always gonna want to have in draw this part um, highlighted. That's going to be your regular cursor where you could do text typing. If you want to select multiple texts, you use this box right here. It's your selector. If you want to erase something when you're drawing, so I'm going to show you right here. If I draw, so I hit here, this is pen. I'm going to change it to green and I can draw 
a star, right? And maybe I don't like that and I can hit the eraser and click on it and it's going to erase. So that's an option and you have a highlighter. So maybe I'm reading this stuff and I want to make sure just like I would in a normal thing, I'm going to highlight important things that I don't want to overlook. I can highlight in different colors. So it's all right there for you. You could change the size of the highlighter or the pen right there with just a few clicks right there. And this is going to become very handy. So you could use the draw feature for like labeling diagrams drawing in pictures of stuff you can also and I was just using my mouse I don't have anything fancy some computers have styluses like that you can draw on the screen if it's touchscreen but a lot of computers don't and that's totally okay using your mouse works just as good so for our science fair process this is going to be important when it comes to the official paperwork so when you get to the official paperwork you'll see all the things starred are things that you have to complete and you're gonna go through and right here it says sign withdraw feature so your parent is going to go onto your computer click on the blue pen and they will be able to sign their name there for the paperwork. Um, if they didn't like their signature, they just hit the erase and just like that. So those are some options. And the last thing, um, on any page in your packet itself, if you hit view, you can also access that immersive reader. So in the content library, the immersive reader, because these are just read only pages, is very visible right there because you can't write or do anything there. But in your actual binders where you do the work, you can have, if you go to view, you, you could get your immersive reader right there. Now the last thing I'm going to show you on this is if you are working in teams you'll notice that the pages if you click on them get bigger and then you have to hit this little carrot or the arrow to get back to your sections right um, but they're big enough to see that way but some people don't want to have all the team stuff so if you click here open in browser and you open up in browser it's going to take you to your notebook using the 365 app now you may have seen that if you go into Office 365 where you have all your options, your email, your Word, your PowerPoint are the ones you probably use the most. You will see this OneNote or this class notebook and that's essentially what this is. You basically opened your class notebook that your teacher assigned to you in Teams into the 365 app and anything you did will sync up. See? Over here, I was not in 365 when I highlighted and added this recording, but I was in my Teams, but it's still connected. So if you prefer to work in your 365 app on your assignments in your one notebook, you can totally do that and still going to connect to your Teams app one. So that's just a choice for you. Hopefully you enjoyed that and um, see the really cool features you have using OneNote. Remember, it's just a digital version of your regular packets or your regular interactive notebooks, what you would normally be writing and drawing in at school. But now you're not at school, you're at home or in distance learning. So this is the next best option for you. Make sure you ask your teachers if you need any help. Good luck with it. Bye.